Have you ever read a comic book or a graphic novel? And did you ever notice that in those illustrations, all the detail that's in the muscles or the facial features? Well, what if I told you the artist of that comic book probably got his inspiration from someone back in the Italian Renaissance? Today, we're going to talk about how did Renaissance art reflect changes in European society. We're going to learn about how the Renaissance changed European society. But first, we need to break it down into three parts. First, we're going to describe the characteristics of Renaissance art. And second, we're going to compare and contrast Renaissance art with medieval art. And then finally, we're going to identify important Renaissance artists and their work. But first, as we go through this lesson, there are two special words that I want you to know. First, your academic word is secular. Other words to listen for in this lesson are naturalism, patron, perspective, and realism. Let's start by taking a look at our lesson question. How does Renaissance art reflect changes in European society? Well, first we're going to look at a new style of art, a new style that was different than medieval art. And then we're going to see how that new style led to the High Renaissance. So the Renaissance was a time of tremendous change all throughout Europe. There was a growth of a wealthy merchant class. Let's take a look at this portrait that we're going to be referencing. These are two wealthy gentlemen. You can see their wealth in the clothes that they're wearing. They're wearing these large fur coats. You can also see an increased interest in classical culture. Now, what do I mean when I say classical culture? I mean, hearkening back to ancient Rome, the time of Plato and Aristotle, when you would talk about philosophy and nature and beauty. There is the development of humanism. Notice that the two people who are pictured are regular gentlemen. They're not priests, and they're not spiritual figures. They're not religious characters. There was a rise of secular focus in philosophy, education, and literature. When I say the word secular, I mean non-religious. When we talk about literature, notice that the artist has put an open book into his portrait. There was an increased interest in science and technology. Let's look at the other things that are in this portrait. There's a globe back here. There are devices for measuring and collecting data. And the main person in this portrait is holding a telescope, an instrument used for exploration and discovery. Now, these factors influence Renaissance art. Let's go back to our lesson question. How did Renaissance art reflect changes in European society? Well, to begin with, we're going to look at a new style of art. And in order to do that, we need to compare the new style with the old style. So let's start out by comparing medieval art to Renaissance art. So let's compare medieval art with Renaissance art. Let's start by looking at themes and subjects and also appearances. Now, if you just look at these two portraits, you can see that they have the same theme and subject. Both show the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus, but they have very different appearances. Let's start out by looking at this piece from the Middle Ages. This was in the year 1311. You can see the Virgin Mary here holding the baby Jesus, but the baby doesn't look particularly lifelike. There are some bright colors around, but the images appear flat against the background. You can see that the people next to her are much, much smaller than her, and they don't look very realistic at all. Let's go next over here to the Renaissance. This is 200 years later, and you still have the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus. But look at her. She looks feminine. You can see the folds in her clothing. You can see her hands, how they look like real human hands as compared to over here. You can see how the baby Jesus looks like a real baby. You can even see the little folds in his arms and in his legs. Take a look at the background. The artist has been sure to incorporate a natural background. And also, look at the people around there. They're the same size as her as compared to over here, where we have the small people next to the very large Mary. Now, medieval and Renaissance art had different subjects, themes, and appearances. Let's start over with the Middle Ages. The themes were almost always religious in nature. They were hanging on the inside of the church to help illustrate the stories that the people would hear. And the paintings appeared flat and unrealistic, and ordinary people rarely appeared in these paintings. But when we look at the Renaissance, 
both religious and secular themes were common. There was more of a focus on ordinary people, and there was more of a focus on nature, a trend called naturalism. And remember, we saw that example when the artists of the Renaissance put in those natural backgrounds behind Mary. And the paintings appeared lifelike, a technique that was called realism. Remember the comparison between the two baby Jesuses from the Middle Ages and also from the Renaissance. Now, another tool for artists was perspective, an artistic technique that was used to give an illusion of space and of depth. Let's take a look over here at this painting from the Middle Ages. However, this was 100 years later, in the year 1400, and the artists were really trying to get a grasp on these tools and on these concepts. You can see here that the artist tried to include some folds in the clothing to make it look more lifelike. He also tried to give the back of the room some perspective, giving it that illusion of space and depth by trying to curve the background a little bit, and by making the floor appear like it was sloping. However, it's a little too much, and it appears that the people are standing on a hill. Now let's go next over to the Renaissance. Again, a hundred years later, you can see that the people have shadows, and that their clothing has these gentle, flowing folds in them over here. You can see that the artist for sure to still incorporate that idea of naturalism by including a natural background, but he really was able to control the perspective and really give a much better illusion of space and depth by incorporating the staircase factor, making it feel like he had a gentle rise going upward. So you can see in just a short period of time, 100 years, the Renaissance painters were really able to hone their gifts and control these tools. So what was the purpose? Well, medieval and Renaissance art, they were created for different reasons. Let's start by focusing in the Middle Ages. Art was generally created for the Roman Catholic Church. We talked a little bit about this, and we described these biblical images to help paint the story for people who were listening to the biblical stories on Sundays. The purpose was to teach a lesson and to support the role of the church. The people in the Middle Ages they were very uneducated, and so this is where they got all of their learning from. Now, over in the Renaissance, art was created for wealthy patrons, people who had money to commission these artists to paint for them. And the purpose was to decorate spaces and to demonstrate their wealth. They were for the enjoyment of the patrons and for the people around them. Now, the church remained an important patron. The church had a lot of money at this time, and they wanted to commission the best artists to create these beautiful pictures for them, for the people to come into their churches and to see all of these paintings. Individual patrons also often appeared in the paintings they commissioned themselves. I want to talk for a moment about classical influences. Now, when I say classical, remember that I mean something that's harkening back to ancient Rome or to ancient Greece. Now, artwork and architecture of the Renaissance period also incorporated classical architecture. Here's a picture of St. Peter's Basilica, which is located in Rome. Take a look at these large columns here at the bottom. You can see these reflected in Renaissance art a lot. Also, classical mythology. Here's a portrait of the Greek goddess Venus, and also classical sculpture. Now, this may be a religious figure, this is St. Mark, but notice that he's wearing Greek-style robes. So you can see what an influence these classical themes had in Renaissance art. I want to take a moment to focus on this particular portrait. This is the Virgin and Child with Chancellor Roland, and this is painted by Jan van Eyck in 1435. The reason I want to focus on this portrait is because it really incorporates all of these things that we've been talking about. Let's get started and take a look at this. Notice that we have a spiritual theme or a spiritual figure. We have the Virgin Mary holding the baby Jesus. How do we know that this is the Virgin Mary? Well, because we have the little angel up here in the corner about to deliver her crown to her. Also, we have the use of realism. Take a look at her clothing. It's got folds. It has movement. Take a look at her face and her hair. It appears real and feminine. Take a look at the baby Jesus. He looks like a real baby. We have an example of a patron. This is Chancellor Roland. He's the one who commissioned this painting, and he asked that he himself be put into a portrait 
with a spiritual figurehead, like the Virgin Mary holding baby Jesus. We have an example of naturalism. Look at the background. You can see the out of doors. We have that classical influence. You can see these columns here that were incorporated. We have a feeling of secularism, which is this open book sitting right here. And we also have the use of perspective. Take a look at the floor. How it makes us feel like we are gently sloping to the out of doors. All of these things came together in this one portrait to really pull together all these tools that we've been talking about. Let's go back to our lesson question for a moment. How did Renaissance art reflect changes in European society? Well, we've had a chance to compare medieval art to the new style of art, Renaissance art. And now we're going to see how that moved into this period known as the High Renaissance. The High Renaissance was a kind of great artistic achievement. It lasted about 40 years, from 1490 to 1527. And it was located here in Rome, Italy. And many of the most famous works of the Renaissance period were created during this time. Now, one of the most famous artists of his time was this man, Leonardo da Vinci. He was considered the ideal Renaissance man. He was a well-educated person who had expertise that spanned across many fields. He explored painting, sculpture, engineering, music, and botany, and he could speak with professionalism about all these different subjects. He imagined inventions that were ahead of his time. Take a look at one of these drawings that he made of a flying machine that wouldn't even come around for years and years and years. Now, he was also a very famous artist. These are two of his most famous works. Here's the Last Supper. You can see that it has a religious theme as this is Jesus with his disciples having their last meal together. But you can also see the ideas of naturalism in the background where he's brought the outside to us. You can also see the effects of realism, the folds and the clothing. You can also see these things in the Mona Lisa. Here's the idea of naturalism, a painted background. You can also see realism in the folds of her clothing and in the feminineness of her face. It's widely debated what the Mona Lisa is actually smiling about, and you might want to go visit this painting and decide for yourself. It's currently hanging in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. Let's take a look at another famous Renaissance painter. This is Michelangelo. He was considered the greatest artist of his time. He's famous for his lifelike representations of the human body, and he's known for his paintings and also his sculptures. Now, what's considered to be one of his greatest achievements was that he painted the inside of the Sistine Chapel, which is located in Vatican City. Now, the interesting thing about Vatican City is that it is actually owned by the Roman Catholic Church. That's where the Pope lives. And Vatican City is its own country, although it's located within a city. It's located in the city of Rome. Now, Michelangelo was commissioned by the Roman Catholic Church to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel to cover a crack that was in the ceiling. And if you take a look at this picture of the ceiling, you can see that there are all these different pictures, which are actually seen taken from the Old Testament of the Bible. Now take a look at the date, 1508 to 1512. This ceiling took four years to complete. And if you zoom in a little bit, you can see why. You can see how lifelike these images are. You can see the themes of naturalism, realism at play here. And if we zoom in even closer on one of the most well-known scenes from the Sistine Chapel, we see the creation of Adam. Here's Adam over here, and you can see the hands of God reaching out to him and giving him life. And you can see the flowing robes in, in God's dress here, and you can see the muscles on Adam's arm. Now, people come from all over the world just to get a look at the inside of the Sistine Chapel. So what was the impact of the High Renaissance? Well, we had a reflection of new ideas in art, new ideas like incorporating naturalism and realism. We had a revival of classical ideas, going back to ancient Rome and to ancient Greece and talking about philosophy and beauty and nature. And we also had advancements in many fields and people wanted to become those Renaissance men who had expertise in multiple fields. So. In Italy at this time, we had the Renaissance. We had painters creating these beautiful images for us, which really came to a head when Michelangelo finished painting the Sistine Chapel in 1512. But it wasn't just Italy that was having this revival. 
Let's take a look here on the rest of the timeline. In 1450, the Gutenberg Press was invented. Now, this is the printing press that finally allowed literature to be delivered to the masses. We had Machiavelli writing a very famous book called The Prince, and this all sort of culminated together in 1517 when the Reformation began. 